All right, so it is about seven in the morning, and today we are doing depth first and breath first search. Um, the algorithms in general. So we found a room. Um, first off, I'd like to uh, thank the Academy for this award. I'd also like to thank my mom and my dad. All right, what's up? So in this video, we're going to talk about two fundamental search methodologies um, when you are searching not just not just graphs but relationships depth first and breadth first search are two fundamental ways to go about searching relationships it's not just about graphs we could be searching we, we would be searching graphs often but we could be searching distance between strings um, of like certain amount of changes between strings um, we could be we be searching a tree so depth first and breadth first search are ways of searching. They're not just about graphs, they're a way of approaching things. Depth first search and breadth first search, let's look at their differences. So, depth first search uses a stack. It either can be a stack that we create, or it can be a stack that is the call stack, where we use recursion. This is why depth first search can be done recursively. On the other hand, breadth first search is implemented iteratively with a queue. A queue has first in, first out. A stack has last in, first out. So for a stack, the last item to come in is the first one to come out. For a queue, the first item to have come in is going to be the first item to come out. It's just like a line, right? When do we use depth for search? When do we use breadth for search? So we're going to use depth for search when we do things like backtracking, um, complete search, exhausting search possibilities, um, finding all the paths, Depth for search is about going deep. Depth for search goes deep. It goes deep into a path, explores all of it, and then comes back outwards, and then decides whether to go on to another path. So, breadth for search is great to check if there's a path between two nodes. So, say we start at F, and we're looking for A. So, if, if depth for search takes us all the way over here, and then it goes all in there, then it's just going to get lost in its exhaustion of possibilities instead of saying, wait, A is right there. It was just, it was just two steps out. This case is not as extreme. But depth first search is going to get you to go too deep and then you'll get lost. Breadth first is about going out layer by layer. So this is what breadth first search looks like. If we started at C, we're gonna explore here and then we're gonna explore one step out, two steps out. So breadth first search is all about going wide slowly increasing the distance from our start node in giving us breadth instead of depth. Also, um, like I just showed you, breadth for search is good for finding levels away from something. This could be a tree, this doesn't have to be a graph. If we're trying to find how many levels something is away, like if we want to do a level order traversal of a tree, that's when breadth for search is our friend. So, like I said, breadth for search goes wide. It does not go deep. It, its priority is to go out level by level. Breath for search priority is to go deep into its path, come back, go deep again, come back, and then go deep, right? So this is the difference between breadth first and depth first. So now let's look at their implementation. All right, so this is the code for depth first search. For this function, we are just passing in a node, our start node, and we're going to print every node in the graph using depth first search. So before we get into the code, just to address the time and space, so the time is going to be O of V plus E, um, where V is the vertices and E is the edges we're traversing. So you're going to see why it's V plus E when we look at the code, but we're going to be touching V vertices and then in each of the, but we're going to be iterating over vertices edges, which will add up to the E, and then um, we're also going to have a space complexity of O of V. Um, so the thing is for DFS with a stack, if we're doing a tree and it's balanced, we're only going to have O of H complexity because we're only caring about the items we have at the stack on, at max. And if our tree is balanced, then we would only have at max the height of the tree in the stack. Um, if it was unbalanced, it'd be O of V or O of N, whatever you want to call the number of nodes. So it really depends on what data structure you're working with, but this is like a general, general statement. So 
here's the code for it. So basically, all that happens is you create a stack, you need a stack for this. Because of the last in, first out nature of the stack, the last item to come in is the first to come out. And then we need a scene hash set so we don't reprocess items and cause a cycle in our traversal. So we need a hash set. Hash set is just a set of unique items. So we will only process nodes that we haven't seen. First, we add the first node to the start. We begin our while loop and we continue while the stack is not empty, while we have items to iterate over and process. So we pull a node from our stack or queue. In this case, it's first search, so it's a stack. We pull an item from the stack. If it has not been seen, then we process that node. How do we process the node? We mark the node as seen, and then we do whatever work we want to do with that node. Um, whether it's printing it, in this case we're just printing it, but we could abstract a function out and uh, do work with a function or something. So it could be many things. And then we need to continue the search. We've pulled a node, we've processed it, and now we need to continue searching. So then we go for each node that's adjacent to this node, then we see if it has not been seen, if it, the scene set does not contain it, then add that node to our search and continue the search. We're only going to do that if the node has not been seen. We're going to process if it's not been seen. So it's basically those three steps. Pull a node, process it, add its children. And the data structure enforces how we search. If it's a stack, it'll be depth first. If it's a queue, it'll be breadth first. So let's walk through an example here just to make things clear. So we'll start at node A. So let's add, add A. We add A to the stack. We're gonna pop A from the stack. And has A been seen? No, it has not been seen. Add it to the scene. Print it out. Okay, now we've pulled the node. We've pulled the node. We've added it. We, we know it's not been seen. We add it to scene and we processed it. We printed it. So now we need to add all of its children. So we have B, C, D, and E. So now we can push these items because they're not, they haven't been seen. So, so now we're back at the top of our while loop. We pop B. Has B been seen? No, B has not been seen. We now need to do work on B. We output it. Now we need to add all of B's children. So B, let's go. A, has A been seen? Yes, has been seen. C, no. G, no. Let's add them. And yes, these two are living on the stack at the same time. We have two Cs, but we're never going to process two Cs because we're always checking if it's seen. We're, they can live on the stack together, but they're never going to be processed twice. Um, and, and you'll see how this pans out. So now we visit C. We're back at the top of while loop. Visit C. Have we seen C? No, we have not seen C. And now, well, we have seen it, but we haven't added it. We haven't processed C. So we process C. So we add it to our scene and we output C. Now we add all of C's children. So we have A, B, D. We've seen A, we've seen B, we have not seen D. Add D. And now we're back at the top of Y loop. We add, we process D, mark D as scene. We output D, and then now we need to add all of these children. We pulled it, processed it, added children. So now we need to go to D. Have we seen A? Yes. Have we seen C? Yes. Have we seen E? No. Have we seen H? No. So now we need to add H and E. So now we've added H and E, and now we need to search. So now we pull E, we're back at the top of the while loop. So we pulled E. Have we seen E? No. We process that. We output it. Outputting is the work we're doing. It could be anything. And now we need to continue. So we need to add all E's children. So E, has A been seen? Yes. Has D been seen? Yes. Has F been seen? No. F has not been seen. Process, we're back at the top of the while loop. Process F. Has F been seen? No. Print it out. And now we need to add all of F's children. Has H been seen? No. Has E been seen? Yes. Has G been seen? No. So now we add H and G. And then what we do now is we um, we're back at the top of the while loop, and now we process G. Pop G, G, print G, and now we need to add all of G's adjacents. Has F been seen? Yes. Has B been seen? Yes. So there's no more work to do with G, and then we come to the back of the top of the while loop, and now we need to process H. So now this is where we, we go, go through things. So we process H, we pull H. Have we seen it? No. Print it out, or add it to the scene, output it. Has F been seen? Yes. Has D been seen? Yes. So now we come back to the top of the while loop and we pull H. So we just pulled H and has H been seen? Yes, H has already been seen and processed. So we don't process it and all of H, and then we look at H's um, neighbors, F and D. F and D have been seen um, because this node has already been processed. So nothing happens, it, the, no processing happens on this node. It's been seen, work has been done on it, and we just popped it out. So 
it's, it's fine if two items are on the stack at the same time. So now G, now we have G on the stack, let's pop G. Same thing happens to G. G's already been seen, and if it's been seen, that means we've processed it. Nothing happens, none of his children get added. Um, if we look at G, uh, G, F, and P, both of his children are already processed. So we've already done what we could do with this node. So then it goes, it's been in the output. So now we process the next node. We're at the top of the while loop again, we're at C. So now, same thing happens to C, same thing happens to D, and same thing happens to E, and now our stack is empty and the search is finished. So all that changes between our breadth first printing of nodes and our um, depth first, or from our depth first to our breadth first, all that changes is the data structure we use. Instead, now we use a queue. So now we're going to use a queue, which has um, our, our first in, first out nature, where the first item that comes in is going to be the first that comes out, just like a line. And then we're gonna, we're still gonna have the scene hash set. We're gonna add the start node to our queue. We're gonna go while the queue is not empty. We're gonna pull, we're gonna, it's called pull for the Java API. Um, we're gonna pull the item from the queue. If it's not been seen, we process it. And then for each adjacent, then we're going to add it to the queue. Um, if it has not been seen. So it's basically the same thing. It's just we change our data structure Let's do it with let's do it on this graph So we start with a and we add we add a to the queue So we're going to pull a from the queue a has not been seen So we're going to process a A has not been seen we add it to the scene we process a and now we need to add um, each of each of a's kids so now we go B C D E so we're going to add them to the queue. So we're going to add, so now we add them to the queue. So this is the front. So this is the front, this is the back. So now we've added all of the children and we're going to process B now. We're going to pull from the front of the queue. So now we're going to process B and now we're going to add it to the scene and we're going to output B. And now we add all of B's children that have not been seen. So G has not been seen, A has been seen, C. So we're going to add G and C to the back of the queue. So we add those to the back of the queue and now we keep going. We process C and now we add C, we output C and now we need to take the um, children of C. So A has been seen, B has been seen, and now we need to add D. So we just added D to the back of the queue, and now we're gonna process the first node in the queue. So now we take D, and now we pull, we pull D, now we process it. So now we've pulled D, and now we need to add all of D's children. So D, E, A, and C. So we, we've seen A, we've seen C, and we need to add E. So now we've added all these children, so now we're going to add E. Or not, we're, we're going to pull the first item from the queue, E. E has not been seen, we process it. So now we need to um, add all of E's children. So A has been seen, D has been seen. Has F been seen? No. So now we're slowly getting near the end of our search. Has C, we, we, we pull the first note from the queue. C has been processed, nothing will happen. We pull G from the queue. G has not been processed, so let's process it. So now let's add all of G's children. We've seen B, we have not seen F. Well, we have seen it, but it hasn't been processed. And now we need to pull the first item from the queue, so we need to pull D. Has D been seen and processed? Yes, D has been seen and processed, nothing will happen. So now we need to pull E. Has E been seen and processed? It's been seen and processed, now we need to pull F. Has F been seen and processed? No. So now, F has been processed, let's add all of F's children, G and H. So, have we seen G? Yes. Have we seen H? No. So now, we need to process, um, we need to process F. So, pull the first note from the queue, F. Has F been seen and been processed? Yes. So now we need to pull H. Has H been seen and processed? No. So now our queue is empty and we have processed all of our nodes. We have eight nodes, we've processed eight nodes. And as you can see, one really key thing is the depth first search wasn't, didn't work, work out as like well for you to like see this, but breadth first search works out very nicely. You can see we go out level by level. So let me write the level numbers. So as you can see, um, for breadth first search, we go out level by level. A is level zero. B, E, D, and C are in level one. They're one level away. 
So G, F, and H, as you can see, G, F, and H are two jumps away from A. So we would need to take two jumps. No matter which way we go, we need to do two jumps. So this is what I was saying. Breath first search is great for a level by level. Breath first goes wide before it goes deep. Death first search is all about paths and going deep into something. So this is basically breath first search, depth first search. Um, the depth first search recursively is, um, it, it, it's cleaner when you're doing things like, um, like um, like the end queens problem that I did, um, it, it's it's easier to do the recursive depth first search, um, but it's kind of harder to understand conceptually. At least it was for me. Um, it takes time, but I hope to do a video on the recursive as well. But this is these are the basics of breadth first and depth first search. Breadth first goes wide, depth first goes deep. So yeah, I think that's all.